let's start the program n relationships the first statement i want to make please understand this is the essence of the whole program relationships are not something separate from you they are extension of you please understand relationships are not something separate from you they are extension of you the way you feel about you the way you carry you the things you believe in you the extension of all this is relationship for example if you believe strongly i am embodiment of love by more and more love i only expand i am not getting exploited you will not have any disturbance in relationships it is what you believe as you it is the extension of you relationship is not something outside you it is extension of you see i am not just going to talk about the relationship with your family with your spouse with your parents with your kids no i am not just going to touch that in these two days i am going to give you the formula relationship with everything in your life your health relationship with your wealth understand you have a certain love hate relationship with your wealth that is why you again and again suffer the spendthrifts shopping phobia all this is nothing but love hate relationship with wealth when you know this is your limit and you go on spending it means what you just don't have a right understanding with relationship you just don't have a right respect for relationship you just don't have right connection for the wealth whether it is your wealth and all fears are because you do not have the right relationship with the reality so i am going to work now very experientially relationship with wealth relationship with health relationship with success relationship with people of course relationship with people is people are going to be the main theme of the program but you will have the formula to work with everything it is not just people responsible for your suffering it is your ideas by the end of these two days i am expecting and i sincerely want you to experience transformation not just the way you relate with yourself and others but also in your very basic cognition with which you relate with everything that exists understand the cognition help blessings to klang malaysia in malaysia klang center they have a, they have there is a there is a pattern in that prana pratishta whenever there is a n program huge kumkum will start materializing from the paduka and deity it has started already it seems i can say this is also certain pattern maybe positive but pattern hmm. so it's a it's let me explain also i am not just working with you all with words i am working deeper than the words you are bio memory see your bio memory is made out of certain stuff we call it prana so i am working in that pranic level when the work starts this kind of materialization and all shows the it is a solid proof that pranic connection is established now not just two way video conferencing connection pranic connection also established i'll share with you few researches 
recently i was studying collecting some western researches to present it to all of you the scientific researches how the relationship the concept of relationship having right relationship directly impacts your health happiness workplace productivity psychological health and mainly cardiovascular functioning and decreasing stress levels people with social ties are 200% risk of dying from heart disease please understand if you are kind of a lonely person aloof not much friends socializing all that 200% more possibility for you to die in heart disease i am just reading out the conclusions of course i am not saying just drink and socialize if you socialize have more friends then less possibility for the heart disease if you socialize and drink then i can say 300% <laughs> anyhow understand only the conclusion don't interpret in your own way same way people who isolate themselves and live only in loneliness their effect of stress on them is at least three times more than a person who has lot of friends and it leads to quicker aging if you want to stop aging radiate more friendliness that's all more friendliness one important thing when you radiate friendliness don't pick up others depression next research some 100 couples were collected by a team of researchers all of them have been taken to the hospitals and various number of wounds were created in their hands many number of wounds but for all of them same number same number of wounds same depth were created and they have been sent back same treatment controlled conditions you will be surprised the couples who have a happy relationship couples who have hostility among them couples who have hostility among them for them it took two times more days for healing the same wounds with the same treatment under the same controlled conditions they are saying twice and for example if a couple with a good relationship if it took 10 days wound to heal for the people with hostility who don't have a good relationship it took 20 days then understand your body your cells your bio memory directly respond to the feeling you carry you experience when you look at the people with whom you are living i tell you even if it is little costly what costly it is going to cost your ego that's all nothing else at the most what your spouse is going to expect if it is your wife she may expect that you give her little attention if it is your husband he may expect you take care of him that's all it's not going to cost you much it is going to cost your ego that's main thing understand but even if it costs your ego maintaining happy relationship is worthy and there are six seven more researches done by mc arthur study of successful aging conducted by national institute of aging and all these researches i'll just give you the conclusion conclusion is people who have this lonely lifestyle who don't maintain the relationship 
their risk for alzheimer's is 10 times more please understand 10 times more than people who have a loving cordial relationship with the family and the people with whom they live see sometimes you may not be living with family but with whoever you are living having loving relationship reduces the risk of alzheimer's there are some more conclusions finally everything boils down to this only they are saying that aging will be slowed down you will be more younger your psychological aging will be reduced the space in which you feel as you you will be more settled and balanced there are some more other technical details i don't want to get into that but everything finally gives this conclusion relationships directly affect your health directly they affect your basic understanding about the life healthy relationships even though it is little costly but it increase your life expectancy protects your vital organs like brain and heart understand relationships are not just protecting your heart it protects your brain also alzheimer's it protects your brain also now i have given you few points why this program relationship now i want to tell you why i am taking as i said in the first statement relationship is not something outside you it is extension of you because it is related to you except an enlightened being nobody can read you as you are please understand an enlightened being knows you much more than you know you so that's the reason i have taken the responsibility of working on this relationship it's very tricky subject you know when you tell the husband to bend his ego he becomes antagonistic to me if i tell the wife no 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 you adjust and go she goes against me i have lot of problems just because i try to mend the relationships of the families see both the fellows are individually highly devoted to me somehow human beings feel for relationship you need to remove some part of your flesh and give which is not true it is a wrong cognition you feel for the relationship that you need to remove part of your flesh and give it to others no it's wrong cognition please understand i tell you go on enjoying you are very existence love life you will simply see all the relationships around you is just evolving and relationship has nothing to do with anger management understand all the so called relationship programs run by these intellectuals philosophers psychologists psychoanalysts they all go on talking about anger management and all these that things understand it is not about the actions you perform between each other it is about the feeling you carry in you about whole see it is all about you it is not about anger when people come and ask me swami ji how to manage the anger i tell them simple solution after you are bust don't you see for example you shout after 2 hours don't go and tell your wife or husband or family no 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 i may shout but i am very good person at heart don't tell all that tell them very clearly i am a bad person when i am angry i am a bad person just take a stick and beat me and give me give back that's it tell everybody give back 
your anger is a clear calculated risk be very clear it is a calculated risk when the person gives you back you keep quiet so best way of anger management is tell the all the fellows who are victims of your anger give back don't think i am a good person i am a bad person when i shout so come on you also shout let us fight fight it out in two days all your anger will disappear i tell you you are covered be very clear but you go on believing when anger comes you are a courageous warrior when it goes up goes down you say no 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 i am a good person at heart why don't you look at my heart all this anger management are this kind of this action based ideas of relationship management all is foolishness understand for relationships only two things one break the old pattern second be centered on your being how i am going to make you all do this too that is the whole drama now whatever is happening the world the world the fact is one thing how you perceive it my world is another one thing your judgments labels ideas opinions interpretations beliefs expressions expectations memories all this put together is my world the world fact is a simple round simple circle actual happening which is given by facts but your interpretation of the happening given by your cognition your judgments your labels your ideas your opinions your notions your interpretations your beliefs your experiences your expectations your memories all this put together creates your own pattern just today morning i was telling arthritis is nothing but the pattern you have about you i want all of you to know if your mind experiences enlightenment it will never come back if your consciousness experiences enlightenment it will never come back but your body does not have a permanent safe haven no it has to be maintained so i will not lose my enlightenment only in my mind only in my consciousness so that much my body also will be protected but all the other rules and regulations of the body does not permanently maintain a high frequency itself once you raise it to the frequency i wanted to tell this essence to you your body does not always retain its highest frequency just because you pushed it to once second important truth the pattern you carry about your body directly impacts the pattern you carry about others also just like body's pattern deteriorate your relationships also deteriorate just because you had trust yesterday it's not that you will have the same trust today it deteriorates the perception you carry about what is happening in life is given by your basic cognition no in us i have seen so many diverses happening how you know first the uh, man will go on get a job in microsoft or somewhere settle in, in us he will get married and take the girl also and naturally he has to teach driving for her 
she has to, because there everybody has to drive individually just in the driving teaching so many marriages will break now really i am telling you just in the driving teaching marriages will break because these guys when they try to teach they show their superiority and nobody can tolerate just teaching driving how many marriages have broken i can tell you the basic cognition is nothing but the way you receive process interpret and respond to any information entering your system through five senses your perception cognition see this my world and the world how you miss how you add and miss which is not there through your perception you are almost never in touch with the actual happening in your life because for you your perception is the happening your perception becomes actual happening all your expectations about life are also based on your perception and how life should be or should not be all your expectations about life are also based on your perception of how life should be or should not be same way all your expectations from people in your life is also based on your perception of how they should be or they should not be this is what i call as fantasy not only that based on your fantasies you are constantly chisel people in your life you continuously judge people resist people manipulate people based on the way you cognize or perceive them your cognition is responsible for the way you relate with life and with people in your life your cognition makes or breaks your relationships bringing awareness to your cognition transform your whole experience of you and all that exists in your life i wanted to guide you into an exercise based on this whole thing please understand please do the exercise sincerely see now i can take this class in two way one with a lot of enthusiasm excitement hey all you guys have come from all over the world you are gathered in all over the all over the world you are all sitting it is time in two these two days i should really see that you all experience a cognitive shift in your life and you experience beautiful relationships i can jump and do that way i can do other way also anyhow these two days i have to somehow push with these guys somehow i can manage i'll sit here sit there and talk here talk there ah okay by tomorrow the whole problem will be over i can run the class in this way also you know both ways i can run but only with the excitement when i stand and do the results will be there on you same way you also can do both ways wow i heard so much about him two days i have a chance to spend around him come on let me sit and let me really take maximum from this program let me do workout let me really make my relationships beautiful or anyhow my wife has dragged me here somehow till evening if i manage then things are done how to manage till tomorrow evening without getting caught and nicely sleep or without getting caught somehow push the time you can do in both ways you also have choice i also have choice which choice shall we choose 
Anyhow, I am going to choose first choice only. I am going to be excited and going to do it. Now it is up to you. You are going to choose the first choice or second choice. If you are choosing the first choice, really doing it, then do it. See the whole program, I made it based on exercise and experiments. Experiential. Because these concepts which I am talking to you, I am talking nowadays every day in satsang. So, all these ideas you will get it in the morning satsang itself. You don't need to be here for the class. But the unique thing I am offering in the class is these exercises and experiments where I am expecting you to do it. So, please do it. In your notepad, make two columns with the titles, the world and my world. Describe the relationship you share with yourself. Recollect and write down the first incident when you first related with yourself. Describe vividly what were the very first impressions you had about yourself in your life. First impression I had about myself as a Swami. This Raghupati Yogi taught me, hey, you are a Swami. I said, what, what is Swami means? Swami means, he described very clearly, all powerful, all knowing, you will not be bound by the ordinary body. I could not understand. But anyhow, I memorized. In Tamil, he said, in Tamil, my mother tongue, he said, I memorized. But I can say still, that one concept, oh God, what it has done to me. Write down the actual incident under the world column. Under the world column, write down your cognition about yourself under my world column. Please understand. Write down the actual incident in the the world. Fact. Write down your cognition under my world column. The two columns. The world and my world. Describe the relationship you share with your mother and father. Write down the first incidents. You see, if you are brought up by somebody else other than your biological father, I wanted you to write only the stepfather who brought you up. Please understand. I am asking you to write about the father, mother who brought you up, not just who gave birth. Fortunately, for many people, both are same. Biological father only brings them up. Unfortunately for some people, biological father, mother are not bringing them up. So, when you write, you need to write only the people who brought you up. They are responsible for all these things. Describe the relationship with your father and the mother. Write down the first incidents when you started judging and labeling them. What was the incident? What did you think of them and label them as? Describe how your mother is, mother actually is, under the world column and how you experience her under the my world column. Describe how your father is under the world fact column and how you experience him under my world column. Describe both, describe under both these columns similarly. About the other intimate relationships in your life, your spouse, your brothers, your sisters, your very close friends and relatives. All of you understand? Just take your notebook, make two columns, my world, the world. See, one side, the world, fact. The other side, my world. Make the column. See, actually when you wrote the world and my world, many of your own misunderstandings you will understand. Many conflicts you created, you will know the pattern now. How? The conflicts are raised, created in you. Let me listen. Who is ready to come out? And come on. The fact, the world and your perception, my world. I
repeatedly have conflicts in the workplace that's mm-hmm. the greatest uh, challenge i'm facing mm-hmm. um, i'm not able to work in a place for a long time say one year one of years two years because of interpersonal conflicts i'm not able to carry it for a long term career okay if i just have to list down as what i hear from the world and what i think about myself okay. say uh, it is something like i am trying to be straight forward okay if i whatever i think about a colleague or even my boss i say that this is right this is wrong or this is what i feel but you know uh, shall i tell you one thing uh, the arrogance or the ideology which you believe you call it a straight forward you understand yep. the ideology you believe you call it a straight forward it always may not be the straight forward hmm yes yeah. so that is the remark no 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 what i am, no i wanted to know what you wrote and what you understood by writing like a, how your mother is and how you perceive how your father is and how you perceive this difference can you describe your difference I feel I am trying to tell you confidently, but it is perceived as ego. Mm. Okay, this one thing I can uh, try to tell. Okay. All right. No, uh, all right. It's okay. You can carry on. So th- this is the main conflict where I am trying uh, to. Uh, I will work on it. Will work on it. See, basically, I am and I am asking you. I am now actually by making you share. confirm that you understood what i am saying i am only asking you the difference between the world and my world share exactly that difference how many of you found the difference come out then i'll share in, with my own life something the world hmm. i am asking my mother where did i come from mm. she is saying uh. i had i am the youngest of four siblings sorry i am actually the youngest of uh. four uh. so my mother is saying i already had three ch- children uh. Uh. in fact one boy and two girls uh. there was no need of another child uh. i was walking in the fish market with the family mm. and in a fish basket uh. there was this child lying unwanted arkum <laughs> vendade like you know in uh, malayalam exactly those words Uh. and that that uh, sentence and uh. then she said we contemplated should we take this child home uh. Uh. so we said okay uh. pawan so we take her that is how what she said uh. my world is nobody wants me uh. and um, this is not my mother uh. my original mother dumped me and uh. i felt kind of cheated uh. my entry into the world was something mm. cheating Uh. and uh, i said i must hey, you should you should understand how one words directly affect i have seen in indian villages they do this they will say that your oh, crow brought it and dropped you and went why the crow is dropping only in your house <laughs> i am telling you really because every other month my house was a giant family huge number almost the two three street is one two three family i can say that every house i go along with that arunachaleshwara photo in the puja room there will be one old man's photo i thought he is also some god one day i asked my old mother who is this guy old grandmother is he also god his photo is there in all the house he said hey keep quiet he is a great grandfather of all of us <laughs> then i thought one fellow created four street <laughs> So it's a giant family, huge, giant family. I used to listen this kind of stories only, but anyhow, I have not heard this kind of story about me. But uh, this kind of stories are very common. But uh, so understand how it affects an individual. Hmm. Please carry on. So that is the fa- the world. My world is uh, yeah. Uh, anything uh, basically this is not my mother no. this is uh, someone my original mother dumped me so i have to fend for myself mm. i have to struggle to get what i want and like i'm undeserving if, oh. only if i 
uh, whatever I want, I have to earn it, to deserve it. Mm. Then only I accept it. Then uh, actually became a rebel. Like mm. my motto in life became do opposite of what my mother wants. Mm. Simple thing. She used to tuck my hair in. I would go and comb it straight. I still mm. remember as a three-year-old. That was my first memory of. Now, now my only aim is to not. I mean, like you know, somewhere do opposite of what she mm. wants. Mm. And um, yeah, essentially this is my world, and that is how my life is. Like any mm. situation I see. I check whether I'm wanted. Mm. If I'm not wanted, I say, okay, you don't want me, I don't want you. Like mm. that. Many of my future reactions. But the problem, you know, many place life may want you, but it may just put you there. It may not tell you verbally. It may not give you the big, big signals as you conceive as welcoming signal. See, you may think only if they give me Purana Kumbha, I am wanted. <laughs> that is your conception. But uh, they may not give you Purana Kumbha in that place, but they may want you there. They may not be rejecting you. So, this idea, your idea of being wanted, always a confusion. Hmm. My mother was, uh, continuously uh, asked me not to eat uh, so much of sweets because I will uh, go and eat sweets as much as I, I want. <laughs> My mother is always used to beat me for that. Uh. So uh, after that, uh, how it happens, you know, I, w I will do those things, but I will try not to reveal it to my mother. So I will oh, do all ah. kinds of gossip so that it is not revealed to anyone. Uh. So, so now I banned. What are you doing? No, I, I, Where my photo is there, you go to the other room and... Any of this fellow is banned. Let me go to the other room and eat. Hey, the, one of our devotee is a head of the oncology department in Fortis Hospital. MD, uh, med, head of the, what do you call, medical director. Medical director of the oncology department in Fortis Hospital. He told me, Swamiji, modern researches, the recent researches are proving if you just stop sugar supply to the cancer cells, they die. Nothing else. Simply stop sugar supply. That's all. They die. Especially the sugar which you eat. Uh, processed sugar. He says it's a direct poison, Swamiji. I am giving you one disease report. The cancer alone because I read that only. He says there are so many other efforts. That's the reason I banned the sugar. Of course, after he said, I also did samyama on it. In my samyama, I discovered that as a truth. That's why, that's the reason I brought it to all of you. In all our ashrams, we stopped using sugar. The food which you are having, nowhere sugar is used. Only jagiri, traditional jagiri is used. My mother will always used to work more for my relatives and she will tell that we need to show ourselves to go and help them in all the ways. But I was much lazy not doing uh, all the work. So sugar I and vibhuti, what will you do? <laughs> I so at least sugar I can say why you eat, but vibhuti? Who made the habit of eating vibhuti? Who taught yeah. you? In a small, whenever when they go to temple and take uh, it, whatever remaining they will just put it in the mouth in a small. So I just used to the taste of the. I mean, I, I was. Now, even now you have the habit? No, no. No, uh, ah. after that, uh, once my. I mean, because of my uh, thing, whatever I am. My mother somehow noted that I am cheating, I am not telling anything. So they. Uh, my mother and my. Uh, uh, grandma, they both themselves, they planned, they asked me to light the lamp, ghee, ghee lamp every day to layer. So, after that one year, that made me change myself mm -hmm. and I stopped eating the vibhuti completely and oh. even sugar, I won't have it in the uh, normal coffee, uh, tea, oh. anything, even right now, I can have it directly. Oh. So, that made me realize the power of Ganesha. Mm. 
I mean, with father, I, he will always ask me to study properly. And even he used to beat me with the uh, hands and uh, if I'm not studying, I need to be uh, be out. So that time I will be much shivered and uh, worried of that. Even once I try to run away from home just because uh, in the evening he will ask me to uh, study everything and he asked me to uh, tell everything properly. So once I did like that, same way uh, when I went outside, somehow I saw Lord Ganesha and he helped me to go inside the home. So I came back, luckily my grandma and grandpa was there and they were convincing my father and mother not to beat her so that she will become something. So you saw Ganesha literally? No, I saw the idol of Ganesha which is talking to me internally. Oh. So that makes me. But after that when I realized... I wanted all of you to understand, don't think these are all, these are illusion. At that age, you have the capacity. After that only, when you start suspecting, you get disconnected. Let me tell you from my life, one experience. One of my uncle, he somehow wants to uh, make my parents beat me. He hates me. He somehow want, me, want to put me in some trouble. So he got on Rudraksh Mala and told me, please you keep it. That Mala has 54 Rudraksha. I will come back and take it from you. You sit here itself and take care of this. I have to go urgently somewhere. He went and came back. Maybe after one hour. Suddenly he started shouting that he gave 108 beats. Now I have only 54. Half of it, I have stolen it. I argued my best to prove that I have not stolen. This is what he gave. But he was... Uh, what to say that? Forcing. Forcing or shouting and telling uh, that my parents should beat me only then I will tell the truth and all that. Please understand. I am telling you the honest truth. Just that the uh, personality, my personality, my energy, it took such a wild turn. I just said, you wanted that 54 Rudraksha only, na? You took it, you say I have stolen, na? come on now, hold it. I did something, first time I materialized. Please understand, when she says she saw Ganesha talking to her, I will not laugh. When she says I ate Vibhuti, I will laugh because I can't relate with it. When she says Ganesha spoke to me, all of you have that capacity. Please catch this truth. When the kids come back and tell you the angel stories, some angel appeared, some angel saw, they uh, spoke and all that. Don't brush that aside as a lie or a false. Try to listen. Try to listen. And one more thing, there are many researches are proving the kids are living with the reality than you. There are many researches proving kids are living in reality than you. First time in my life I materialized and one more thing, that time I was, I have not learnt properly as a technique or a process to materialize and all. Just my wilderness came out as a power and after materializing even I started crying. See how that uh, feeling, first belief I can, second Come on, let me challenge. Third, let me do it. How that excitement or inspiration or that extraordinary power came into me, I also don't know. But whenever you are cornered as a child, you always express extraordinary qualities, but you forget because neither society is ready to believe nor you have the ambience to encourage these things. You forget, you yourself doubt, suspect and just leave things. So after that, I, even though I, I, was, I came back, I didn't study properly, but it hit me in the next uh, Hindi exam, which I failed. Uh, but actually it is not uh, a normal school exam. So even though it is in the exam, I started crying like anything. Mm. Then my father consoled me and he make me to join another tuition class. Mm. 
from that time onwards i made an intimate uh, thing like oh my father will only help me to do these things and this will always be in uh, my help so uh, that, that uh, actually got over when he actually helped me afterwards all right yes but i wanted to tell you on one thing say i am exactly what i am asking you know the the world and my world which you wrote i am only asking the difference between these two everybody is coming and telling me all the stories anyway when you share i can't say stop i have to listen i listen but still i have not got exactly what i wanted from you it means i am not able to make you understand i think R take the book and read out what you wrote in the my world and the world that's all i wanted come on this side about father what is the world and what is your world your perception i did not get uh, any clear idea about my father or my friends but i have got some idea of, of my relationship with, with my mother mm. um, my mother uh, uh, she uh, in reality she always take care of me she works only for my family she always uh, uh, look forward for my growth and uh, she forces what i need and uh, she, uh, she works towards that but what i feel is she is the barrier for my growth and mm. uh, in my life uh, whatever activities uh, uh, mm. she is asking me to do uh, those those things i feel as barrier for my growth in my workplace or in my personal life wherever it is mm. so that is one thing my all right you understood at least yeah. you are able to catch it go ahead swami ji when i did the exercise i'll talk about my husband who's also here mm. the the world really i couldn't do anything more than list his name and his height and simple things like that uh -huh. but when i started to look at the my world mm. i realized that there were all sorts of things which went back to really how the relationship with my mother and my father were uh -huh. my mother always felt that my father didn't look after her or um, you know that he was really too nice a person to really deal with the regular world out there and i realized that i had unconsciously formed all these beliefs uh, about my husband which were completely not tr true when i looked at the the world all of you understood come on let's go to the next city she exactly got the point see basically i wanted you to understand how the gap between the world and my world creates so much suffering for you san jose anybody nityanandam swami ji yes tell me nityanandam swami ji can i say hmm please tell me carry on yeah so um, with regard to my mother uh, the for for the world i had uh, she's a hard working loving responsible and very caring person for my world i felt that she, i always feel that she's very controlling she never allows me to make any decision do you understand and she always overrules me whenever you, i come up with any and how you are misunderstanding about your mother has disturbed your relationship with her yeah i do now, i do it every time see, now the only way to heal is call it call her back call her okay and talk to her okay understand complete okay. your unfulfilled karma okay the hangover pattern you okay. have complete this for everyone this for everyone all the relationship is unfulfilled karma only when you complete it the karma leaves you till then you will have this pattern every new for example you have a unfulfilled karma with your friend every friend you create you will replicate the same pattern you will replicate the same pattern i am telling you you will replicate the same pattern 
you are misunderstanding with your mother or father leads to misunderstanding in all your relationships of any woman and men in your life any unfulfilled karma you carry from your father on all men you will project the same any unfulfilled karma you carry from your mother on all women you will project the same from one friend if you carry the unfulfilled pattern on all friends you will project the same till you complete the pattern you are going to suffer with it i tell you you need to complete the pattern the root of all relationships in your life starts from your mother and start from your father so complete with your father with your mother you will liberate yourself from that karma i tell you if you complete with your mother suddenly you will have a completion fulfillment with your wife you may not even know why because the pattern is broken and the unfulfilled karma leaves you same way with your father because you project you go on projecting that unfulfilled pattern all i am trying to tell you is break this unfulfilled pattern idea fulfill it fulfill it come on let me listen now from some more people charlet charlet sri salem come on tell me what do you want just wanted to comment on exactly what you had just said um that my father yelled at me a lot as a kid and i often was very confused at the reasons why and felt that he was just overly angry and displaced his anger um and was really unaware and that recently transposed into a relationship that i had just ended with somebody where he broke up with me and basically I don't want to accept it. <laughs> I think that he's he's wrong and that if he just knew my side of the story that he wouldn't have broken up with me and it's just kind of silly but I can see the relationship directly. Daniel, all of you are able to understand from what she is sharing. She was sharing that the conflict which started now ending her present relationship also. see the degree up to which you can be powerful in your relationship is directly proportionate to the degree of fulfillment you experience with your source relationships your source relationship is your father and mother so in that pattern how much of completion you did only from that that depth of completion the degree of completion only will be available or only that much will become reality in your present relationships also because father mother relationships are from bio memory all other relationships are muscle memory only the bio memory fulfillment forms the foundation for the muscle memory is fulfillment let me listen stories from bidhi people come on bidhi anybody else come 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 out i was an average student uh, when i was when i was student Hey, there is no such thing as average student everybody is average student understand <laughs> what is there and after they become 14 specialized things see till 14 learning various languages various truths about the life like a, what is love what is relationship what is nature what is mind 
what is soul this is enough 14 years kids should learn only this basic tools after 14 ask them you want to become a doctor go medicine you want to become engineer go for that you want to become lawyer go for that after 14 let us decide till then let us leave them to live same some guest comes to your house at least give them a coffee let them settle down then beat them the moment they come inside you lock the door and start damal 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 <laughs> beating them inside that is the way it feels like a, the moment child comes to your uh, house you just lock the door and dum 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 first 14 years stop educating kids don't torture them don't take away the joy of this whole world that's a time the kids needs to be infused with joy just simple joy needs to be infused nothing else but in the first 14 years the suffering you teach you make them believe life is suffering and i tell you after that anything you give life is suffering i just feel so blessed i was born in a village where school is not forced on me education is not forced on me life is not forced on me and i really wanted to retain at least that one trivannamalai the same way so that if i want to come back i'll have a place happy place to come back really teacher who is teaching will not know what is in the book after after 14 after 14 ask them see by 14 they would have been so filled with life and joy in their bio memory they will be ready to do anything for you they will be ready to do anything for planet earth you understand you see first the layer of bio memory you build muscle memory you build in the children should be joy morning get up early morning and bend your body prepare your body to live in excitement and live in excitement go around see places see things pick up on your own using just your five senses 14 years is not a too much time in 100 years life i am telling you my gurukul kids just day for yesterday i was given a demonstration 120 items they are remembering just if you utter the word that's all you utter 120 word not a sentence just yellow moon darkness <coughs> star parapet wall camera some random words snake all mixed together it doesn't need to be animal or vegetable or one brand one color one thing all put together you uh, tell 120 words simply they are remembering they understand the power of memory see i was given more a vedantic training but never a systematic training to awaken all my dimensions in all spheres of life it is a and they don't have any monthly examination or yearly itself they don't have examination what about monthly no all of you know that in my gurukul we don't have examination only the 14th year a child attends examination till the age of 14 no examination but we are excelling more than outside kids when they go to the 10th examination all of them are above 90 above 90% no textbook you know that in my gurukul i don't have textbook i want to create human being i don't want to lock the doors and beat you left and right what kind of a lifestyle the children come to you and take bath and come on you catch them and you torture them so much they become demon i tell you if your children are sending you to the old age home you are responsible you send them to school that's why they are going to dump you in old age home 
the first 14 years, it should be left to live. Live. It's too early, as if all the fellows educated are productive immediately the day one or what? No? First 14 years, a child should be living. Come on. And then we used to have a parents meeting that is that was really a headache for uh, for all of us mm. and uh, like teachers used to question why uh, he or she has scored less marks mm. and all mm. and parents used to say he is not at all interested in studies or something mm. or he keeps watching uh, tv or mm. playing and he does all nonsense kinds of things mm. and 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 uh, all parents parents should know all my kids are living with, not only without TV, they don't even ask for TV. I gave them option. I told them, you can have TV. They said, no, we don't want. And parents also uh, encourage the teachers, yeah, you have to, if they are not, if they are very dull or something, they will encourage them to beat. Or, uh, yeah, you can cane them or whatever you want to do, you can do that. And it's your freedom. And they get more liberty and they just uh, this, uh, this exploit the students. Mm -hmm. I tell you, this anger, you see, this knowingly or unknowingly, they created this anger in you. And you can't take revenge on that guy back. Now that anger settles in you like a layer and layer, you, that anger starts expressing in anything you relate with the world, whole society. These first experiences, they really play a major role in your life. My first experience on the stage, at the age of 11, Raghupati Yogi, my teacher, finished teaching me the Yoga Sutras. He put me on the stage and asked me to give a discourse. On Yoga Sutra. In Tamil, I am speaking. It was such a big success. He himself did Padapucha to me. He says, officially, he's like a putting me in the throne. Declaring as his successor. He had his own followers and all of them were there and all that. It's such a big success. I can say that that gave me the confidence and he blessed me in the end. You will be Ranga Raja, means ruling the stages always. And I tell you, even now, not for pride or ego, any stage I go and sit, any number of politicians or gurus or anybody may be there. All the fellows flap over. You now people are afraid to call me in, into their stage. Because any number of guru politicians, whoever may be there, out. Still, I continue to be Ranga Raja, means ruler of the stages. Ranga means the stage and Raja means ruler of the stage. That first experience, which gave the confidence. It's true, the first experiences are really, really, really powerful. Come on, let me listen to, mm, come out. Nidhanandam Samiji. Give me exactly difference between when the world and my world. I'll give you. I have got my experience in a little bit different kind of note. Mm. Uh, especially after attending this Inner Awakening in 2009, uh. when I think I have attended few more programs. When mm. you ask us, mm. uh, you just write down this kind of thing mm. because of so much of unclutching, unclutching, unclutching. It has you just forgot. happened like this. Really, I can't find anything actually good, bad like that. See, actually, so I can I say, got, no, I, I if you got, already started living and clutching, then it's an initial level program for you. So, actually, uh, about me, when you asked here to write, I just found uh, this thing as my, uh, what do you call the, the world. In my childhood, my grandfather used to have satsang in the, at our home. I used to be a small kid. He used to keep me on my lap. So, by hearing those things, now I remember, uh, then... My grandmother used to do this worship of Shiva, Lakshmi, Saraswati, all these things at our house. Mm. And also she used to put a flower on my head. Mm. You are also God. Mm. I started carrying that feeling as I am also God. So in any kind of games and all, I used to say, I am God, I am right. Mm. 
so this kind of thing was going on uh-huh. which definitely showed up in in my school days in my college days till the time i met you uh-huh. and then comes my world uh-huh. my world i just wrote like this because uh-huh. i'll have to look at the words uh-huh. it cannot just flow like that uh-huh. some something flows inside uh-huh. my grandmother used to tell that you are god so it actually you know uh-huh. probably know. ignited some <laughs> ego so i never formed any impression about myself in fact in my life i was just flowing like a piece of straw in river ganges and it is not that i was scared of finding what is that i am bad or what is wrong and what is good uh, but i just could not stop flowing because simply i loved flowing till the time i met you i had the first impression about myself when i met my swami i found myself flowing with tears also flowing down by the corner of my eyes okay mitananda <laughs> come on this side somebody anybody hmm. hello nitananda um the world um i want to share with my mom um she's a very loving mother and she got divorced when i was very young but i feel like her love towards her children became extremely possessive and later on when we grew up she fell into an intense depression which uh, instead of bringing us closer it was pushing us away more and more and more so right now i feel that um her love even though she's extremely loving and supportive and she wants to support and everything she's really suffocating so much the three of us the three i'm the youngest of three and it feels draining and affected i'm very much affected by her depression mm. and her state of mind and it's it's not supportive and also um with my father uh i really never had a father figure because they got divorced very young so she kind of took the role of mom and dad and for her love all the way all the intensity of love and doing everything for her children became an extremely suffocating and draining and expecting um clinging so that is my world in regards to her loving thank you that's the difference you see yes okay yes nityanandam because of unsteady mind simply wasting time with family because of unsteady mind simply wasting time with family being always alone at home watching tv spending time with kids the world my world i want to become a good civil construction businessman i want to do and give good service to the ashram and do more work to the people see you are saying about your future i am asking about what was so that we can mend it and build the future anyhow i'll i'll you will catch it in the when you when somebody else is sharing okay huh? it's okay come on come on itenanna swami ji i've just come to share my relationship with my spouse uh-huh. uh, when you were telling um, about the relationship of the father and mother is the primary one uh-huh. i got a click uh-huh. i always used to think that uh, we live in a joint family he is very close to his brother uh-huh. so for everything he he takes his opinion right from going out to buy a car whatever he reports every moment even when we are traveling to next city he keeps telling we are in mandya we have reached mysore we have had four like that it used to irritate me a lot and i used to feel why he has to report every moment we are not small children we are grown up and we need to have some uh, space of our own so many times i used to argue with him and i now realize probably he lost his father when he was in second puc ah. very young even now uh, he has bought a car which he really didn't like just ah. because his brother said <laughs> <laughs> and i feel suppose he forget something what i says for example in his small uh, recording of morning satsang i told him yesterday and he didn't do i was so upset yesterday he was not in town ah. on phone i just uh, see you always forget whatever i tell but you remember yeah, everybody else's <laughs> i have not understood um, i have tried many times that this one relationship is one which is bonding me 
I'm not able to uh, get out. I told him this one engram, my possessiveness about you, I don't know how I'll come out. I've told him many times. I still am not able to come out of this uh, one uh, relationship. So. Mm. All right. See, now, to make you understand only, I was, I was asking you to share. The only way to complete all the problems of relationship is completing them. What I call Purunatva Kriya means fulfilling, calling them back, consciously make up your mind to restore fulfillment with both your father and mother. First start from there. So call and talk to them. Talk to them how that your idea of my world created a rift between them and you. The world and my world. And take responsibility for your interpretation or cognition about them. Share with them how you interpreted. See, let me tell you my own completion. And I wanted all of you to know, even if you become enlightened, till you carry this body, unless you complete, you will not be freed. I was at the age of 17, 17 and a half, I was leaving the house for this Parivaraja Gayatra. I went and told my mother, I am going for the spiritual pilgrimage. She just looked up and said, she did not answer first, she just looked up. Then I said, Ma, I am going and becoming a sadhu. Immediately her eyes, the water started flowing, she started crying. Then I hugged her, she hugged me. I had a very sweet relationship with her. Always, I will be sitting in the kitchen, telling her stories and eating. She had a strong faith, I am God, even those days. Because this Raghupati Yogi has convinced her. See, in Orthodox homes, when they cook for deity, they will uh, eat only after the, it is offered to deity. They will never allow children to touch or they will not touch. But anything my mother cooks deity, I will eat and she will never tell me don't eat. And after I eat, she will put it for the deities. She was very clear that I am some way spiritual or extraordinary. Very close relationship I had. Till the age of 14, I slept with her only. Till the age of 14. And I had the problem of bedwetting. <laughs> really. I will fall into Samadhi. Later on I realized it is Samadhi. At that time it was a problem. All the school kids will make fun of me. Once in a while I go to the school. And this is one more reason for, man, for me not to go to school. I will come back and tell, no, they are all laughing at me. See, anything happens in your house, school will know because it is a small village. And it is a giant family. So early morning they will bring the bed and dry it on the top of the rooftop. Then whole world knows. <laughs> I had bed wetting that night. She had me and I had her and then finally I asked her, what do you mean by crying? You mean to say I should not go? She did not tell I should not go. She told me, no, 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 I cannot stop you. I am not able to tolerate, so I am crying. That's all. I am not able to digest, so I am crying. You see, if she fought with me, I would have fought with her. I went with the mood of fighting. I prepared all my dialogue for fighting. But suddenly the whole thing tumbled down. She is not fighting with me. She is crying. Now means I would have changed the dialogue. But that time I didn't know what dialogue to speak. Anyhow, I left, but I was very firm and I gave them three days time. You call all your relatives, whoever want to see me last, they can see. Because I was very clear, I will go away to north and never come back. 
and it is almost like a big ritual. I was seated in the sofa in the center of the house. All the relatives and the old ladies will come and cry, ah, why are you going and all that. It's almost like if there is a dead body, how they will cry? They came and cried. And after some time, they will have their coffee and go out. That's all. Nothing more. And for many people, I did not even give a logical reason. I told them, why don't you eat? It's time. And they straight go and eat. That's it. <laughs> Only for few people I need to give a logical convincing, convincing or fighting or reason and all that. Many people they will come and understand, ah, why are you going? Why can't you be here like us? Why are you leaving Arunachala and going? Is there any place better than Arunachala? I will tell you, why don't you have coffee? See the smell, go, go. And straight they will walk inside. They will not even think I am not answering their question. Really? People are so unconscious. Anyway, the three-day celebration is over. Farewell celebration. And my grandfather tried to bring all the intellectuals of the city under whom I learnt. I learnt Saiva Siddhanta and all these things. The mantric tradition. All that I learnt. And all those pandits were brought chanting Rudra, Chamaka and all these mantras and all that. So all those pandits are brought, Tamil and Sanskrit pandits and they were all sitting and advising long, big, big lectures. Finally, usually whenever they come to my father's house, my grandfather's house, they will receive 11 rupee dakshana. I told my grandfather, Papa, uh, they have finished, why don't you give that 11 rupee? <laughs> and they took the 11 rupee and went away. Anyhow, I left the house. Became enlightened also. In my search, so many things happened and I achieved that experience and all that is over. When I came back to the body, settled into the body, first thing I saw there is a hanging, biomemory, mother's suffering. Understand, she, I, she never fought with me. If she has fought with me, I wouldn't have had any hangover. Come on, you hit me, I hit you, bargain is over. But it was a crying. The moment I settled into my body, I tell you, Diwali day, I settled into my body. Next day, I was in Thiruvannamalai to meet my mother. It's like a, um, when a woman delivers baby, how the body will be very fragile. That is the way my body was there. So I was just walking and I saw my mother in the temple. I was sitting in the temple. I did not go to the house. As a sadhu should not go back to his house. I was sitting. I have already taken sannyas also. I am with a kavi. And the temple, some relatives saw me and they recognized me and they said, they asked me, can we inform the house? I said, oh, okay, you can inform. And she came to see me and then, when I told this to her, she said, no, no, Swamiji, I can't disturb you. But I can't, I could not tolerate, so I cried. Only when I again hugged her, see, first time when she hugged me, before she could take her body out, I took it away. That un incompletion was there. This time, till she took her body out, I was hugging her. I can say that is my completion. Only when I completed, understand, even I settled completely in me. Even if you get enlightened, unless you complete, you will not be able to settle down. Even if all the engrams are burnt, the body, the biomemory which you are carrying to function, that retains the incompleted pattern. Then she told me, if you come and eat in the house, my food, the food cooked by me, I will feel everything is complete. I went to the house, then I said, you should give me Purnakumba and receive me as a sadhu. She said she will do everything. And she went and organized Purnakumba. 
on all the things necessary to receive a sadhu. And when a sadhu comes, how you are supposed to wash the feet and do the pada puja in the outside the house and receive it. Purnama, she did everything. She organized everything. As per the tradition, your mother is not supposed to touch the feet of even a sannyasi. So my father did the Pada Puja. When my mother bent, I said, no, 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 it's okay, let him do. She said, no, you are not just a sadhu, we know you are an incarnation, you are a divine incarnation. She did the Pada Puja. I can say the first Pada Puja after my enlightenment, I received this from them only. And I went to the house, they put that banana leaf. I sat on the ground, she served the food, I ate. I can say, with that food, I digested that unfulfilled, incomplete, incomplete pattern also. Understand? The main reason why I am telling this, when you, in this break, next break, complete. Only when you call and take responsibility for your perception and complete, and fulfill that, complete the relationship, make them understand. Fact was different and your perception was different. Your perception was responsible for this wrong pattern and complete. Then you will see the source relationship will be fulfilled. When the source relationship is fulfilled, only then your all relationships can radiate fulfillment and strength. Dear Swami, I need to do Purnatva in situations that concern my three-year-old son. Could you please tell me the best way to do that? He will not understand. See, never think he will not understand. Keep him in your lap and do it. Talk to him. He can understand. I tell you, you will come back to me saying that Swamiji understood and he replied. So, one more question. If our parents or friends are dead, how to complete with them? Read a letter, write a letter to them sit in front of the wall, invoke their presence, do the pranapratishta, invoke their presence and read out this letter to them. Come on, start talking. So, we don't understand your tears. So, my mother, uh, this what I realized is, yeah. I told you, the purpose of my life became to do the opposite of what she did, that I just got theoretically. Mm. But now I got the impact of it when each one started sharing. My father passed away about two years back and uh, I made an effort to take her to Hyderabad and live with her. But within two months, I mean, we were always like a palm and what you call the snake and uh, this one, you know, always fighting. So she, obviously she came back. And since that day, I have been trying to escape. I would come very rarely to Bangalore, though she's here. And... Uh, Literally, as if my work is done now. My father and I had a great relationship. I'm done. I felt she tortured my father. I felt, yeah, whatever she's getting, she's suffering. That is her punishment God is giving her for however she handled. She loved me, but she also emotionally abused me. That pain and revenge or whatever, vengeance was always there. To the extent that in two years, then you came into my life, uh, February 2010, and I started, now I realize, I thought I was doing a great service. But I was using it as an excuse not to uh, be with her. Like it was a vent for me. It was a relief for me. In fact, let me tell you Swami, when I was coming for this end relationship problem, through your teachings, your blessings, it has been abundant on me in the past one year. I don't know what I did to deserve it, but you have been giving me abundantly. Uh, patterns are going off just like that. I don't even do Pada Puja. I mean this regular Puja with the Guru Puja. You are just in my heart always. You know, just that Swami, Swami happens. Mm. Anyway, I, I don't know what, but that is there. So, uh, what what uh, happened is, uh, anyway, I don't know what I was doing. Ultimately, I stopped visiting her in Bangalore. If I come, I'll come to Bidibi and I will go back. I won't even go to see her. Mm. Though all she says is, she loves me a lot. She trusts me a lot. She puts all nominations in my name. Mm. Every evidence she has given me that you are the child, I really trust. Somehow, that incompletion was there strong in my mind. And uh, I'll just tell her, she let me call me once in a week. I'll not call her. I'll call her in 20 days once and say, I'm so busy with mission activities. 
you don't know what this responsibility is blah 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 and all that now uh, udupi she wanted to go to udupi krishna i just uh, i told her you i was trying to fix her i said you come to swami and do end relationships then he, like, always i thought the problem is there you won't believe from the airport all she to i said for the next two months because i'm going to do inner awakening some excuse like running away mm. i just told her i am going to go to bidhi and if you are coming to bidhi you come mm. otherwise i'm going straight from the airport it went through my house but i didn't even stop at her place and i came off since so many one year she has not even seen me because of the october event and all nicely i used that as an excuse now i see it's an excuse mm. all she wants is take me to udupi krishna uh. and i am telling her this is my krishna uh. you come and see him here same krishna cannot be sitting there uh. some argument like that uh. i am, was always trying to tell her you do what i want i know this is right like that i am right attitude you are wrong uh. and all she is asking is come for 2 3 days uh. i want to go i say no you come to tiruvannamalai uh. like that you know suddenly when you were sharing i got how nasty i have been with her mm. like you know and i in fact swami i really when i came for this program mm. i said there's only one relationship in my life that is my relationship with swami that is true but only after you he all exactly. the relationship what i got you need to get a no due certificate yes no what i got is swami mm. till they are there my patterns are reflecting on them mm. without that completion if i come to you mm. i will reflect it on you yes Oh my god I was so scared then that is the last relationship That is what happens with many people So don't reflect don't put all that on me No complete it and come back come on Yeah See the thing is like my parents uh, are the, are not there with me to be frank with you I came for an health program that time that is one of my prayers that I should get united to them It was my ego that was stopping me thinking that i have done the you right don't thing. even need to use the word strong word ego your perception okay so that didn't allow me to talk to them for all this two months time see um, the incident which i recover is way back to my childhood as it is for everyone basically i didn't had the basic trust on my mother that mm. she, she hides things okay and she might act against my interest has been deep rooted in me the incidents for example uh, in my childhood even till the time i went to college i never used to take this buttermilk or curd or anything like that okay uh, if in my childhood i could recall the incidents like she used to mix that with rasam and try to give it to me i hate that taste okay <laughs> i hate that taste but she would have done it for her health yes uh. i hate that taste uh. and once it happened another relative girl after mm. taking this kind of food she gave me the rice with just rasam mm. that tasted good mm. and i asked her why it is like that mm. unknowingly that girl told you know your mother is mixing with buttermilk ah okay so i mm. asked her are you doing that she strongly mm. said no i am not doing that ah. it happened twice thrice mm. okay finally i realized that she is actually doing that the moment i asked her to mix rasam with buttermilk and just to mix it with rasam okay mm. she got you know, she you did, did the research say anything. yes so if what i'm saying is and i could re- recollect one incident like i one relative visited my place there was a rajinikanth movie going in my uh, you know uh, th- nearby theater and there was an exam i went for the movie i couldn't prepare properly and i failed in that exam mm. and when the results came actually she is also a teacher in the same school and mm. she is actually walking behind me i didn't realize that and i was just on my way to my home and there was a shop that is coming up with nice paint and things like that actually from within it was a shock for me that first time i failed i i i i i, I felt i am so unsuccessful i was feeling bad only but the colors and other things in the shop the, it was attractive that i was trying to touch and feel that it was sticky and some reactions and, and i came inside the house after i came inside the house when i was not normal she asked what happened and i show the things she got really irritated and she just beat me like anything that day and i was hurt and by the time my father came 
I was still in that mood. And when everything was told to him, my father was trying to support me, saying that, I think you have hurt him so much, no? Um, he's not okay. That moment, the word she was trying to say is, nothing like that is acting. No, after getting the result also, I saw him playing with paint and come inside. Okay, he's just trying to make up a case kind of thing. I felt really bad, okay? You saw me from behind, okay? And I was truly feeling hurt. Instead of giving me support, you doubted my, you are very, my thing I that. And People you, becoming I, insensitive to you. Yeah. So, right from that, if I see the pattern, even few years back. Where but you need to understand one thing. People don't need to support you. Understand? Huh? It is completely wrong expecting support from people. Understand, human beings are orphans. You came alone, you are going to go back alone. Anywhere, if somebody gives support, be grateful to them. But you are not qualified for anybody's support. And same way, nobody is qualified for your support. If you are giving, you are giving as a gift. If you are receiving, you are receiving as donation. That's all. Make it very clear. When the, the moment it has to be done comes, you start creating wounds in you. The pus in you. Go ahead. So, even my recent years, when there was a, you know, uh, uh, their 60th marriage, uh, when they are having it, there was somebody who I didn't know. He was sitting next to me trying to take food. He was trying to ask me what I am doing, where I studied, whatever. He had some good regards. And it just happened that that guy was trying to refer somebody as some girl is there and we would like to uh, you know, uh, get my horoscope or something like that. I don't know what mood she was in. The way she said is, actually he said to settle. You know, let him first get a job, then we will see. I felt so bad and insulted. There is no need, I felt there is no need for her to tell this answer there. There could have been n number of answers. Even if that has to be told, that could have been done in a better way. And even, I realize I have made uh, you know, a love marriage. I'm happy with my wife and my kids. Fortunately, I got a family which I, I cherish. But somewhere, a lot of incidents is something like a kind of revenge I took on my mother. You didn't value me, okay? You didn't care to say, uh, give me a life, so I am setting my own life. So, what are be the conflicts and things that has been happening till now? It is something. Did you call them now and complete it? Yes, I spoke to them. With whom you spoke? I spoke to my both my uh, mother and father. And tell me that experience. So that is the real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So as definitely when I was telling all these things. Right from the incident for my health, she has been doing and things like that. You know, basically, she never had anything against me as any mother will never have anything against the child. She has been her own calculation and trying to get me in a right track. And she basically said, at least now you understood me. At least now you understood me. Even... I, the examination results and things like that, I had my sister who was laughing at me and you no know, trying to you know take advantage of that situation for that particular span where she got a special attention from my father and I didn't get it. The later when I started studying properly, I, I thought of reverted it. Now I am topping. Now you got to give me respect. And I have to get special treatment than my sister. All these things has been repeatedly coming and ruining no, both my parents' life, my life, and my sister's life. Even as my father, it is something like, no, he never speaks up. If somebody, two people are there in a conflict, he keeps quiet. Even he suffers, he doesn't speak. So many times when he shares his incidences, what happened is you know, his workplace, what happened with the parents. The child, as a child, when I'm listening, I wanted, why don't you tell this? Why don't you tell it to them then and there itself? Why don't you fight back? This has, I have been keeping on telling this, but it has gone to a different dimension now that I am almost impatient to give reactions. What I am feeling that I just expressed without you know, processing in a proper way. 
no these are all certain things i could recover in a matter of few hours when i no i am speaking to them almost after an, after an year okay and no even the when the, when they took the call that anger was there the moment when i started speaking all this incident as you know obviously she was saying i didn't even remember all these things happen only thing is you just trust me i don't have anything against you i am really happy that at least now you realize and rest of our lives let us be happy and <laughs> thank you so much this prayer which i put in front of you during yen health mm. no that has has become reality now yes Great. thank you <laughs> see actually when this kind of things happens don't think i am fulfilling your prayer you are fulfilling my prayer i am praying to you please have a happy life <laughs> <laughs> so you are fulfilling my prayer <laughs> see for most of us our whole life is a reaction it's a revenge you take on the all the situation and people which happened in you in the initial years before the physical maturity i want to tell you one thing this time when i went to tirunamali last time after i don't know maybe 20 years i told uh, the my secretary come on let's drive and see my school even when i was studying i never went there <laughs> please understand i want to tell you an important fact the moment i saw i was shocked because in my memory the building always was recorded as a huge building now it looks so small just if i send one brahmachari he will build that building size also small and the whole value is small everything is so small i thought oh god i really called two three local people and spoke to them did they demolish and rebuild they said swami ji how will they rebuild it rebuild in the same shape and size this is the building original building it is standing who is there to give money to demolish and rebuild and all it was built by my grandfather and he passed away now who is there to build give money forget about it it is the same building then i did samyam on it then i realized one important truth before 14 all the people places everything you thought about all of that too big larger than life size after that you realized it is not larger than life size but you want to take revenge on them how dare you fellows acted as larger than life size in front of me hey, they did not act you perceived they never acted you perceived but now you want to take revenge on all of them your father mother uncle aunty everybody now you are aunty and the situation against everything now your whole life is taking revenge on the people who are involved before your physical maturity you just want to tell them you are too big guy you are not small as they treated you that is why everybody wants to go back to their hometown and show after they become big i am saying it is taking revenge on anything you perceived experienced at the age of before the physical maturity around let nowadays it is not even 14 less than 10 by 10 kids are physically mature so please understand actually the even the college which i uh, studying they asked me swami ji would you like to buy it and have it in your name they offered the cost was very less which we could have got but i said no i don't want to change the name the name in which i studied the founder let that same name be there naturally if i buy our organization people naturally we would have, we will we have to use the name nityananda and we have as per as, per, as it, it has become a kind of a byline in our organization anything we run in our name so that 
it is once for all clear. So, I, do, I do not want to change the name, let it be same, it is ok, because I did not have a revenge on them, I do not want to take revenge on them, but normal life is completely taking revenge. Same way, I have seen women who went through abuse, they became dominating. Uh, did you do the sharing? Sorry? Did you do the sharing? Means completing with your parents? Yes, actually. Uh, tell uh, me the effect of that. Uh, I don't have any unresolved issues with my mother. Uh, she's with me. Uh, I don't. I didn't have any. Or I don't have any unresolved issues with my mother. She's with me, mm. and we have a very friendly, loving, caring relationship. Uh, there was some bad time which we faced myself and my uh, my sister and my brother in my childhood because of my father mm. and uh, right now also apart from my father all rest of us are together always in contact um, so we made an attempt both my sister is also here so we made an attempt to talk to my father mm. and uh, somehow uh, we realized that today in today's situation he also realizes his mistake uh, he is regretting about it and uh, he just said one thing however i was and whatever i did i as my kids i always loved you what was the relationship between me like him and my mother is different that's not your business uh, like we'll take care of it but between you and uh, like you as my kids and me as a father i uh, always gave a lot of effort and i always did a lot of hard work for you guys to you know, uh, so that you sh you should come up in life and you establish yourself. And then we realize that yes, today whatever we are, both of us are very independent uh, financially, career also good. So somewhere we we have always respect for him, but we never accepted it or acknowledged it. But today after talking to him, like you know, we know that he is also equally he was loving and his intention was always to you know give us good things in life his ways were wrong the way he was doing this week we were receiving money and education but from where it was coming those were not right and still those are not right he is regretting those things and i don't know if, if i have to do anything for that like you know if i can help him to release those things but the, as far as the relationship goes, yes, there is a, he loves us, we respect him and I think that should be about it like, I mean, you have to guide us uh, because I don't know. So you feel completed? Um, no, I, as a daughter, I, he's suffering, so still, uh, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> then let him come for the relationship, send him <laughs> for the program, you see actually, if they also come and attend the program and they call you back, then only the cycle becomes complete. No, we, we almost spoke to him for 30 minutes, uh -huh. two of us and uh, he Actually, did. if he takes the responsibility of now what you took, Ma, see, you called, both of you spoke, yes. but you only took the responsibility of healing. Yes. You understand? Yeah. If he takes the responsibility of healing and he calls you wherever you are sitting, then cycle becomes complete. But Swamiji, I know that. <laughs> I understand. He is at the age where it will be difficult for him to accept. Uh, it is possible. Family. No, there is no such thing as age. I will do the job, don't worry. <laughs> Swamiji, <laughs> thank you so much. Only thing is, you know, we always, his parents, like my grandparents, were very much religious. I mean, we really had religious childhood, except for this particular part which he played. If it was, if he had followed his, his parents' path, it would have been very much blissful. But now we have mixed feeling. When we think of our grandparents, we think we are very much blessed to have such grandparents with spiritual inclination. We also have that feeling. But it's like, it's mixed now. I understand. So you have I understand. Thank you so much. Come on, this side, newcomers. What you shared and what transformation you had, by the completion, let me listen to the stories. Uh, dear Swamiji, uh, thanks to Almighty, 
I mean, uh, I have no regrets in my life as of uh, this moment. Uh, born in a big family. Uh. My father was a role model for me. Uh. He was uh, very caring. So no problem. No problem. I mean, very, I, very I rare, but it uh, happens sometimes. And after marriage also, I mean, uh. we are blessed with two beautiful children. Uh. They are also coming out with the flying colors. Uh. Uh. I mean, uh. thanks to parents and almighty uh. Uh. and for your blessings too. Great. Thank you. Come on, let me listen from this side. You see, mainly I wanted to hear when you completed your experience. All newcomers, come out. Your completion and the experience of the completion, come out. Namjiya Swamiji, uh, my sister that she just spoke uh, and uh, both of us uh, spoke to her father today. I just want to add few things to what she has already said. Today I spoke to my father after almost three years. Wow! Yeah, and uh, uh, to continue the her story, basically uh, after all the financial mess that he had done, I had taken personal responsibility of my parents. Actually, when I went to become a Swami, I did not speak with them for around nine years. I thought only I am the person who has done this. But now I am seeing many Grihastha are also doing this. <laughs> not talking to parents is not something great. I thought I have done a great achievement. No, wow, no, come on. Huh. Something we wanted. So basically I took responsibility of both of them, got them to Pune, that time we were in Pune and uh, I was trying to help them, him uh, no, rebuild his life. Uh, but uh, after a few months he again went back to his old ways. And finally, we had to take a call because it was getting too much for all of us to handle. Mm. So, I shifted to Bangalore because of my job and brought my mom with uh, me. Now, she's with my sister in Chennai. And my dad is still in Pune. And then the contact was cut somehow. So, in, and as my sister said, we have that spiritual base since childhood. So, we really don't have a lot of hang-ups in life. And we believe into karma and releasing and forgiving, you know. We've been doing that, but yes, definitely it helped me that I spoke to him and told mm. what was the reason that I was angry with him and uh, I understand his viewpoint and all the responsibilities. Basically, both of them got married at very young age. It was like 16 and 17 and they just got uh, married. So, mm. I said, I understand from where you come and all your hard work and all the pressure you must have gone through. Mm. But these are the points because of which I felt hurt. And But I've forgiven you and I seek your forgiveness and I seek your blessings. And he said, I realize my mistakes. I'm sorry. And uh, I know my mistakes and I know I've not done them intentionally. It just happened in that flow of the thing. And all I right now want is uh, your and uh, all three of you's love and your mother's forgiveness. So, which I understand and he, he started crying on a phone, which is very rare because the kind of image that we have for him is like a not even Hitler, probably, is, that's not a word. It's a different image, basically. So he started crying on the phone, so it was very touching for me. And it was very reassuring that, you know, things can resolve when you talk. After that, I called my mom, and we're very attached to our mom, and we have very, very, very sweet relationship. For us, both of us, she is now our daughter, you know, so it's a role reversal for uh, us. We take care of her that way. So she's, she's the best thing in our life. But my, I shared the experience with my mom. I said sorry to her also, because because when they were going through a trouble marriage, three of us suffered. And I always had that these guys did not care. All they think about their own problems. They don't think about us. So I, though we are over that and we are, you know, best of buddies now, I said sorry to her that, you know, I misunderstood you at that time. I, I had some anger because you guys did not care. But please forgive me. And uh, yeah, that was easy. Talking to my mom was easy. But what she said is that uh, I don't have any, you are you know, my kids and you've done so much for me and all, all that unconditional love and everything. But I cannot forgive your father. So I said, okay, we'll talk about it later because there's no point in because she's alone there and both of us are here and she'll get emotional. So I said, we'll talk about it later. And I know she is not able to forgive him for a long, long time. It's very, she suffered for 35 years of her life and it, which is like, she got married when she was 15 and for the next 35 years she suffered. So it's a big thing for her. I don't know what I can do to help her to, you know, so that she is also able to release and forgive. Because we've tried to, in past, not after last, like whenever they have a problem, both of us are mediated and tried to solve, not share. So we got matured very early. We shared our problems and shared their problems. So all the marital problems with husband and wife, we didn't know what it is, but we tried to solve it at the age of 10 or 11 and all. 
right now i know that she's not because we're trying ki okay just let go not for him your own sake just let go forgive and be happy you know we are with you she's not able to do that so probably that is something i want your blessings for her that she is able to forgive and so that's part with the parents and uh, as you say we carry the impressions from our parents it actually happened with both of us we have had our own troubles in our own marriages and uh, I both of us have had love marriages so it's a history of love marriages in the family but anyways so I had a very good marriage for one and a half year and one day suddenly he disappeared and since then it's been like almost 3 years now we have tried to everything to get in touch with him to talk to him to resolve it we are not getting any response and I personally want to complete this cycle but with him I don't know how can I do it because I don't know where he is he doesn't take my calls now I don't even have his numbers He never replies on emails, and I really, sincerely, I want to complete the cycle, but I don't know how because there's a blockage, and I don't know. So that is something I need your guidance on. I understand. Thank you so much. You did your job. I'll do my job. Don't worry. Whoever has shared, please bring your experience on completion. Come on. Come on, come on. Miss Kanandam, um, when I was eleven, my parents divorced. Oh. Um, since I'm thirteen, I I didn't want to see my father anymore. Mm. So then I didn't see him for eight. Years. Then I di- I didn't have contact with him for eight years. Mm. Um, and then when I was twenty-one, I had again contact because of some reasons. But I have next, sh- I never told him why I didn't want to have contact with him. So today I told him mm. because he's. um very dominant and he always made me very upset and emotional and uh, he always asked me so many questions and like it was it was very difficult for me so i prefer to stay away from him um so he told me oh he didn't really realize but it must have been because uh, he's a director of an insurance company so he said um he must that's why he's used to deal with people and to be the boss and like always ask questions and like that So then he said what did he say He said I I forgive you that you didn't want to see me And I said okay I forgive you that that you are like that and it's okay Okay <laughs> We'll speak to him and then we'll decide uh-huh. and when he comes back it it always used to be like um, he says no I won't come you you guys go and come And then again if I go to my father and ask he'll say Uh, let's see uh, he doesn't want to come we should uh, let's see how it how it will be possible so i always used to feel that he is more important than me for my father so oh to your brother oh when he says he wants to come your father will bring he'll be actually he wants him to come here so he'll bring ah uh. <laughs> but in your case you want to come but he is not bringing you yeah Oh God! Uh. So, Then, uh, so I you spoke to him. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. What he said? Know. He said it's not like that. Uh. Uh, it's just that we Ma, have maybe, to see no, no, all no. the possibilities. Maybe he feels you are already connected, but he has to put little effort to make that guy connected. He said that's that what that should be the truth. Huh? Yeah. Ah, uh. so don't worry. Now you are relaxed. Yeah. Ah, uh, go now. I felt like <laughs> such a huge thing in me has. Mm. I felt so light after mm. doing. This. Relax, great. <laughs> so, Nidhi, mm. quick question to you. Yes, uh, quick. <laughs> uh, where does our original perceptions as a child come from? So much. Original perceptions that we as a child, if I'm perceiving a such situation in a certain way. Another child would have perceived the situation. The perception as a child come from. It is just a casual decision. No, it's not from your past uh, mm. lives. From past, you don't bring so much. Okay. You bring only basic things like a man will walk straight. You should have this much size of the brain. These things only you bring from past. This, this details you don't bring. Thank you. Sir. Come on, let me start. Please understand. this is the nitya kriya specially for breaking your 
my world concept whatever you are having the pattern to create my world to break that sit in this posture or vajrasana vajrasana means sitting on your knees Uddiyana Bandha, first step Uddiyana Bandha, it's like a warming up, pull your bowels in and up and hold as long as you can, when you feel you can't hold anymore, then relax, do this 21 times, you can Sit in this posture or Vajrasana, please be on the ground, not on the chairs. If you are pregnant or you think you are pregnant, don't do this Kriya. Others can do. Close your eyes, pull your bowels above and below the navel, back and up and hold as long as you can. Next step. Intensely exhale and chant Hunkara Mantra, H O O, by continuously exhaling, like Ooh. only through mouth. Go on exhaling, empty your lungs, stomach, everything. When you are empty, give a break, automatically your body will inhale, then again exhale, go on exhaling, now you can tie your ribbons, you can close your eyes and tie the ribbons and continue this exhaling, go on and on and on, tie the ribbon and go on intensely exhaling. Next step, sit in a deep silence, attuning you are inhaling and exhaling with the sound hum sum, inhale with the sound hum, exhale with the sound sum, start on the hum samantra, hum some attuning this mantra inside but you are inhaling and exhaling has to happen only through hamsa mantra um, so
you can open your eyes.